Hey guys, welcome to the Introvert Dating Success Show, courtesy of introvertdatingsuccess.com. I'm your host, Harry Wilmington. Well, I don't know if you guys watch the show Bachelor or Bachelorette at all. And I became a fan of it a couple of years ago. At first, it wasn't really my bag, but I've learned over time that this show is really a great way to study the ways in which women allegedly pick guys that they're going after, but more importantly, how is it that certain guys don't get picked? What actions are they doing or what things are they saying that end up resulting in them not getting picked? And so this week was the season finale of this current iteration of The Bachelorette. Uh, so for those of you that don't watch the show, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about the show, uh, this particular show, and then talk about the differences in between the guy that she picked and the guy that she didn't. Because there's a lot of things that the guy that she didn't pick did absolutely wrong. That goes to show you why being a guy that is overly emotional and wearing his heart on his sleeve, more often than not, is going to actually not work in your favor, all right? So, short version is, the woman this time, her name was Michelle. She was on a previous season of The Bachelor and lost, and then she came back as The Bachelorette. So, of course, she has 30 guys to choose from, and so, for the season finale, it whittles it all the way down to two last picks. In this case, it's a guy named Nate and a guy named Brandon, okay? And these two guys, one of them, so Brandon is the clean-shaven guy who is really all about Michelle, and Nate is the guy that has a beard and is also about Michelle, but hasn't really been emotionally available and open to love up to this point, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe in the last episode things that I saw that let me know very early on that of these two guys, Nate was going to be the one that she chose over Brandon, just based on how they went about dealing with various dates and conversations that they had and how and emoting themselves to Michelle. Okay, so the big thing is this, is that Brandon was a guy that really wore his heart on his sleeve and from almost like day one or at the point where they started having more one-on-one -on -one dates and stuff was very much all about Michelle. He was very much open to the fact that he was falling in love with her. He would kept telling her all the time, I just want what's best for you and I want to see you very, really happy and I'm so committed to this and I just have all these feelings and emotions and stuff for you. And then on this last episode, both guys got to meet the parents, okay? And so with Brandon, he had actually met the parents in a previous episode because uh, on one of their one-on-one -on -one dates when they were in her hometown, she took him to their house and then they got to meet him and have a conversation and whatnot. So this was actually their second time for the parents meeting Brandon, okay? And so the whole time, you know, Brandon's gelling well with the mom and the moms were just really enamored with this guy and the father likes him. They had a little inside joke that they already have based on the first time that they met. And so things were going really good. And at one point, uh, Michelle talks to her mom privately and she's like, the mom's like, oh man, he's, he seems like he's really about you and he really likes you. And I just see him fitting so well into our family. And Michelle's like, yeah, he's that guy that I, I, I already know. He'll, he said he, he's down to, to be there for me and down to do anything I ask of him. As soon as I heard that, I was like, uh oh, this is going to be a problem. And I'll get to why in a second, okay? So, but anyway, so we'll go from Brandon's meeting with them to now let's talk about Nate, okay? So Nate has a guy, is a guy that has set up to this point that he has never, ever really had a serious relationship. He's never said the L word to anybody. He's never felt those strong feelings. And now he's on the show with Michelle and this is the first time that he's feeling them, okay? On top of that, the, uh, so Nate got to meet the parents also. And of course, you know, the mom takes the guy off to the side and starts having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. And she keeps asking him like, have you ever been in love before? Uh, do you plan to, to, you know, that you live in a different city than my daughter. So if this works out, do you plan to move? Yada, yada, yada. And so it's interesting, she had asked Brandon the same question. And he was like, as soon as she, uh, the mother asked, hey, so would you move to, a, to the same city as Michelle? Without flinching, he was like, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm there like the next day like the next day. And so this guy was just kind of like, well, you know, I'm not really sure. Cause you know, I mean, I like where I live and she likes where she lives. So we have to kind of work it out and see what's going to go on, but I'm not sure yet, but I really do like her and whatever. And so after that, the mom talked to Michelle and Michelle asked her what she thought about Nate. And, and, uh, she basically said, Hey, honestly, he's, I think he's a nice guy. And I thought Nate is not, Nate, Nate is not an a-hole in any way, shape or form. He is a nice guy. But she said, but I'm not really sure if he's ready for that step of marriage. Like, it doesn't seem like he's really at a place where he'd be willing to actually like get down on the knee and like start a life with you. So I don't know if it's that serious. Like, I, I, he's a cool guy. I just don't know if he's quite ready for that step yet. Okay. So again, we have two guys here. One that's like 
darn near ready to move and has been professing love this whole time and is are clearly Michelle knows that he's ready for whatever. Meanwhile, we have Nate over here. And up to this point, Nate had not yet expressed that he loved her. He hadn't expressed a lot of emotional things. And so she kept saying the thing, you know, I'm not quite at a point with him yet because there's certain things I need to hear from him that he's not said yet. And I'm wondering what's, what's holding him back. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is the guy she's going to pick. Now, why do I say that? Why is it, why, why do I sound like some kind of like curmudgeon guy that's just like, oh, this is just because guy moves feelings, yada, yada. So here's the thing that I've said on the show before, okay, is that there's a way in which attraction works for women that works infinitely better than other ways. And one of the ways that women become more attracted to you is if they feel as though they have to do some work to actually get you to confess or admit to them how you feel about them, how you view them, how you view viewing, uh, being with them, okay? And so when you come to the table and you're already saying, hey, just so you know, I already love you, I already care about you, I would die for you, I would do anything for you in the world, as, as well-meaning as that is, and as well-meaning as you think that might be to do to get her in a place where she unequivocally knows how you feel, the reality is that there's a level of unknowing that actually helps a woman be more attracted to you. Because if a woman doesn't know all the way how you feel about her, it means that she now has to go through the exercise of asking you how you feel, of trying to wonder why it is you're holding back. And she has to talk to her girlfriends about, you know, what is it about this guy that I'm so intrigued by him, but I don't know if he's intrigued by me, what's going on? And if she in her subconscious mind has to work for that, she's going to be more appreciative of a guy that she has to work for and of a guy whose emotions she has to work to get out of him than a guy that's just already giving it to her, okay? And so we have these two guys. We have a guy on the show that is ready to marry her. Tomorrow is ready to give her the life she wants is, is everything that that uh, she allegedly is asking for in a guy that is able to you know emote and, and not hide his feelings. These are things that these women are saying that they want on these shows. And yet the guy that she ends up wanting to choose is the guy who is not fully telling his emotions at the time and is not fully able to express himself and hasn't really had a lot of love in the past. So now it's kind of iffy who you can even love. And now she wants to be the one to be able to prove that love is possible and that she is desire is desiring of his love and he should be desiring it of her as well. Okay. So all I kept seeing was guy wearing heart on sleeve, not going to get it. Guy that's not wearing heart on sleeve and is not quite yet at the point where he's emoting. And then she, she has to damn near drag it out of him with like pull, like pulling teeth. That's the guy that ultimately she ended up choosing, okay? Because at the point where she was able to go to him and finally pull out those emotions, she said, oh, I finally got out of him what I've worked so hard to get, him emoting this net. So again, she had to work extra hard to get this guy to emote. And then fast forward to the part where they're supposed to both propose and Brandon comes out first and proposes and says this whole thing. Oh, also, the night before the proposal, after her date with Nate, she goes back to her room and sees a letter from Brandon and it's this whole flowery letter about like I just care so much about you I can see our lives together and I just want what's best for you and I hope to see you tomorrow my love so we can start spending time together and when he's when I saw that letter I was like dude now she's really not going to pick you because you're doing the thing that a lot of guys think is going to work which is you're trying to write her some kind of letter or some kind of poem or some kind of long diatribe about feelings and you're thinking that she needs to really hear just how much you care about her in order for her to pick you and I keep telling you guys the only thing that matters is how she feels about you, not how you feel about her. Because she's going to want to feel things and hope that you are going to connect with her on that level. But you can't overdo her on the feelings that she feels for you. Because then it's going to seem like you're the one that's needed. You're the one that's... If, if a woman feels as though your entire world is going to crumble if she's not in it, that actually adds a lot more pressure for her, to her to be perfect, to have to be the kind of woman that can never make a mistake. And that is a lot of pressure that women don't want to feel. Versus if she's having all the feelings for you, even if you mess up at times here and there, it's not going to deter her from seeing you as the perfect guy for her because it's for her, it's more about how you're making her feel, not about how, how your feelings are for her, you know? And so this is why... You don't need to be overly expressive in your emotions because more often than not, women do, as much as women tell you or think that they want a guy that is as emotional as them, if not more, women 
unequivocally, based on my experience, based on the things that I've viewed, based on the guys that I've coached, most women do not want guys that are more emotional than them. Okay, this does not mean that you don't do actions that indicate that you care for her or that if she comes to you with an emotional thing that you that you don't become that solid rock that she can lean her emotions on. And it doesn't ever mean that you can't express a time that you're hurt by her, that she says something, whatever. But what I'm saying is that you need to be the one that's more steadfast. You need to be the one that's more even in how he displays his emotions, okay? You being over flowery with language, you trying to be the overly expressive one, more often than not, is going to shoot you in the foot and not work in your favor. And this is exactly what happened on the show. He went to propose and she's like, well, I just love you so much too, but but I just don't for some reason feel this thing and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, because you didn't have to work extra hard to get his emotions. The guy that you had to work hard for is the guy that you're gonna to wanna to try to stay with and try to make this work. Now, what's also interesting is on the finale, after they do the finale part, they do the after the rose part where they interview the, they they both interview the second to the second, the runner up guy who was Brandon in this case, who lost. She, Michelle comes out and they get to kind of talk and interact again and talk about stuff. And even on the show then, he was still kind of like, well, I want to listen to your side of things before I start emoting myself because I want to know where you're coming from. And like, he's a guy that is very practical and is actually surprisingly very emotionally intelligent. It's just that he showed too many of his emotions early on and that's why he didn't get picked ultimately. But, after they get after they interview those two together, then Michelle comes back out with Nate, who is now her fiance person, and they're talking. And so, you know, the hostess asked her Michelle one point, like, you know, so how is it now? Has he been able to be emotional off camera with you? And she said, and I caught this, she said, actually, he's he's been he's been emotional. In fact, he's been very overly emotional to the point where sometimes I'm wondering, like, man, like he's more emotional than me. And I heard that and I was like, oh, this probably is gonna work out. Because he's thinking. In order to get her, he had to finally show emotions. And now he's thinking in order to continue to keep her, he has to continue to be emotionally expressive. No, 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 no. Again, women want you to be able to jive with their emotions. It does not mean that they want you to become an overly emotional softy, okay? Because they're still going to want to look at you as a guy that has strength that they can lean on when they're going through stuff. And if you're one that's overly emotional and trying to bring up these emotional conversations all the time, that can actually turn women off. And especially since as much as we think women are like highly emotional, there are women out there, like in this case, Michelle is not a person that's like overly emotional expressive. Even during the course of the show, yes, there'd be times where she would cry, but most of the time she'd be able to have reasonable conversations. She wouldn't like freak out or, or you know, yell at a guy if suddenly things weren't going right. She was very even in her emotion as well. So especially women that are even in their emotions, they really don't want to deal with a guy that's overly emotional, okay? So you have to kind of read how your woman is. But women that are high in their emotional state or ability to be emotional, that does not, again, mean that they want you to be as emotional as them okay so keep all this stuff in mind is that yes it is good for you to be emotionally intelligent it's good for you to be able to know how to interact with her emotions and what to do when the situations arise but you thinking that you need to express all this emotion and talk about all this emotion and have all these feelings conversations it's not going to win you any points in the long run okay so consider that and for you guys that have a hard time figuring out the balance of how to be emotional but not overly emotional how to be able to express yourself but not do it in a way that's going to chase her off i recommend you go to my website introvertdatingsuccess.com and check out my program introvert dating success which gives you the ins and outs of how to meet greet attract and land the woman of your dreams but also how to keep her around how to be that emotional stable guy how to modify your mindset to be the kind of guy that can express his emotions in a way that aren't going to chase her off and that still keep you at even tone but keep her respecting you as well okay again check out that program at introvertdatingsuccess.com also get the free copy of my ebook no girls for you the ultimate guide to losing the girl of your dreams by signing up for my email video newsletter all right Right? Also, guys, this show is all about you. If you have a, a question you want me to answer one of these shows, write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. You can also show support for this show by subscribing to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Harry Wilmington or leaving a cash app donation at dollar sign Harry Wilmington. All right, that's all I got for today, guys. I'm Harry Wilmington. I'm doing 25 of these uh, shows in a row or 25 days in a row leading up to Christmas. So we got a couple more days, at which point we'll be at my 300th episode. I'm very excited about that. So check back in tomorrow for another episode and I will catch you all later. I'm out. Peace.